Slava Zuzu Christou. Slava. Can you hear me? Okay. No? How's that? I'll be kissing the microphone. So my name is Pamela White, and I'm from our nation's capital, the National Shrine of the Holy Family, and I'm representing Group B. And I took out malpractice group leader insurance before this, just in case I don't accurately reflect what we decided to do. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that. But yeah. <laughs> All the lawyers, yeah. Okay, so I asked our group to start, I was very impressed with the idea of the light of the world, so I asked our group to start off with that metaphor of the light as it reflects, as it attracts, and as it illuminates. So if you were to illuminate your parish, what would somebody see with all of that light, and what would that attract? And of course, does it reflect the gospel? So we started with how to live the gospel, and agreed that it has to be an individual self-examining process before it can become a vibrant parish, to quote one of our group members, it's a vibrant, a vibrant parishioner who creates a vibrant parish. So, wow. So, along those same lines, the self-examining is how you live that gospel on a daily basis. And I'll segue into the difference between adoration and obligation. So if I show up on feast days, it might be because I feel obligated. But if I'm showing up on a regular basis, it may be because I actually adore my church and I adore the liturgy. And that segues into part of the vibrant parish is helping us really understand our liturgy. So I happen to be a convert, an adult convert to the Ukrainian Catholic faith. I think during my conversion process, thank you, Father Nestor, I learned more than many of the people that are in the parish. So perhaps each of us could take a look at ourselves as if we were converts and we had to start anew, the beginner's mind, starting from the beginning. And in that sense, hopefully our adoration will spill over and that becomes our vibrant parish. So we also discussed, as part of a vibrant parish, having uh, individual prayer groups. So for example, there might be a mother's prayer group, I think somebody mentioned, and they actually take the time at church, maybe they separate themselves out. But continuing this purpose of prayer, somebody else just mentioned it, praying for people to come in, praying for people to come back. Certainly our prayer life has to be one of the most important aspects of bringing that vibrancy. All this applause, I feel like you do a tap dance. So along these same lines, an understanding, again, going, kind of going back to the convert story, is being educated on a daily basis, remembering what the beauty of this liturgy means, where it comes from, as well as our general education. Lastly, and this is number one still, and this comes again partly from my story as a convert, I studied with the Orthodox Jewish community in Washington, D.C. for five years. And one of the things that impressed me so much, they really do have a vibrant parish. Uh, I don't think they call it a parish, but in any event, Part of it is because they are rigorous in protecting the Sabbath. And we do not, in my experience, in Christianity today, we do not protect the Sabbath in that rigorous way. We don't start at sundown to sundown. We may go to church, but then right after that, we're off to do our errands, we have to do this, we have to do that. Whereas in this Jewish community, if you walk in, first of all, you are welcome. Second of all, you're welcome to have a Sabbath lunch with a family. They still have coffee and donuts, but then there's this whole long day of community and study. So even your topic at lunch is not just about your child's school or your work. It really is about that section of Torah that you've been reading. 
So this is an idea to keep the vibrancy so even in our coffee hour discussions, we could actually be discussing the gospel or the homily. All right, so on to welcoming people back and welcoming, welcoming newcomers. This is actually very similar to everybody else. The importance of community, community outreach, use of technology. And also, here today we are delegates from our parishes, but we can also be delegates back to our parishes. So that not just on the priest, but we ourselves sharing the information that we have learned from everybody else and bringing it back to our, to our friends and family in our parishes. Just a few fun ideas. In terms of reaching out to the community so people know who we are and feel invited to come join us, there was an idea, I think others may have heard of this before, I'd never heard of it, it's called Theology on Tap. For people who may be a little bit more conservative and don't want to drink alcohol, that might not be a good idea for you, but the idea is that people meeting in social environments, I guess on tap might be beer. So, and you have a discussion and a priest would be there as well. But these, these kinds of social activities can encourage certainly anybody, but primarily, I guess, young people as well that might be interested in further that information and say, wow, these are really interesting people. This is very interesting. I want to actually go to the service and see the real deal in the environment. And we'll just say on top of that some parasocials, which were also mentioned as part of that idea of a vibrant parish, but I'm using it as part of an idea for encouraging people to come back and people to come that are new. And I think that's it. So thank you so much.